In this Wrestle Talk news, a potential rumor killer on CM Punk's backstage unhappiness in AEW, a notable name is gone from WWE, a rumor killer on Warner Brothers Discovery being unhappy with All Elite Wrestling and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to Always On for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk! Last week on AEW Dynamite, CM Punk cut his first promo since coming back from injury to set up his match with Jon Moxley at September's All Out, which was later revealed to be taking place this Wednesday instead. However, that wasn't all Punk did in the promo segment, kicking things off by calling out Hangman Page following their title match at Double or Nothing back in May. Adam Page didn't answer the call, and Punk said that wasn't cowboy shirt, it was coward shirt. He also said that Paige's apology must be as loud and as public as the disrespect. It came out shortly after the show from Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio that this was an off-script remark, and Punk was not supposed to call Paige out and instead just cut a promo on Moxley. Fightful Select confirmed Meltzer's report, saying that Punk was unhappy with some of the comments Paige made in the build-up to that Double or Nothing match by alluding to his real-life heat with former best friend Colt Cabana. The situation with Cabana got so heated backstage a few months ago that he wasn't going to be re-signed by AE until several names spoke up for him in the locker room and Tony Card instead signed Colt Cabana to Ring of Honor instead. Dave Meltzer added in the Wrestling Observer newsletter that some in the AEW locker room are at breaking point if this situation doesn't get sorted out. Fightful Select also added that Punk has verbally expressed his displeasure with the situation, with one source thinking he might end up quitting AEW, or at the very least, could not have shown up for the August 17th edition of Dynamite. One veteran told SRS that they'd heard threats being levied of Punk leaving the promotion. However, going by Dax Harwood's Twitter, perhaps we're all just Marks being worked and this is nothing but a work. Don't work yourself into a shoot, jabroni Marks. Much love, HH. As he tweeted out a photo of him and Punk with a big old smile on his face backstage saying, he gave me the job of your punch pose and if you can't tell, he's very unhappy. Now this could also just be Dax the Axe having fun with us all, adding some fuel to that speculation fire because of all the reports circling around. But it should also also be noted that Brian Alvarez on Wrestling Observer Live noted that this situation has divided the AEW locker room, with some siding with Punk and others siding with Paige. And it's made very clear in interviews and on TV that Dax and Cash Wheeler are friends with CM Punk in All Elite Wrestling. So if they were going to be part of this divided locker room, we can likely guess which side they'd fall on. As for all of this being a massive work, Alvarez noted that this has nothing to do with storyline. That's not to say it won't become a work down the line, much like the MJF situation, but we won't know that until it gets resolved or becomes an on-screen storyline. What do you think is going on? Let me know in the comments down below. But speaking of internet rumors about AEW getting killed, we've got another one for you. The internet is a funny old place, isn't it? To peel back the curtains somewhat, when I write the Wrestle Talk news, I scour through websites to find the most interesting stories to bring to your attention. And one of the stories that really caught my eye this morning was a rumor that Warner Media, since their merger with Discovery, were unhappy with the ratings for AEW Dynamite and were considering cutting the show down from two hours to one. Now, a simple quick think about this would raise some eyebrows. When AEW first signed their deal with Dynamite to get on Warner Media channels, it was reported that the expectation for the show was to get around 500,000 viewers a week to be considered a success. While Dynamite doesn't draw the same numbers as Raw or SmackDown, it consistently averages around the 1 million viewer mark, either slightly above but more often slightly below. It's also often number one on cable, with an 18 to 49 demographic rating, the most important metric for advertisers, which has always been the case and not just something new invented by Dave Meltzer, that is so good Warner Media sent out press releases to websites touting the success of AEW Dynamite. But yet a rumor started to circle around the internet drain last night that AEW Dynamite was in trouble of losing its second hour, to the point where a Twitter user reached out to Dave Meltzer to ask if this was true. To which Daddy Melt said, I've been told untrue. It makes no sense. Why would you cut back one of the highest rated shows on cable? Andrew Zarian also added that it was not happening on Twitter, and WrestlingNews.co added that Warner Bros. Discovery is said to be be happy with AEW. The funny thing is, I couldn't originally find the original source of the news. Everyone putting this up on news aggregator websites is just saying it's an internet rumor. After some digging, it turns out that it came from Zero News, a known troll on Twitter who supports the likes of Billy Batty. So yeah, this one's a load of old bunk. The moral of this tale is to always check your
your sources, folks. Someone with actual credibility about them is Mike Johnson of PW Insider, who is reporting that Jeff Jarrett is once again gone from WWE. Sorry, I should probably do that in the classic Vince McMahon style, shouldn't I? Jeff Jarrett is capital G, double O, double N, double E, gone from WWE. Jarrett was brought back into WWE in 2019 after going into the Hall of Fame and joined the company as a backstage producer. He quietly left the company in 2021. However, this past May, it was reported he was brought back again as the senior vice president of live events. And just a few months later, Jared is gone again. While someone losing their job is no laughing matter, this is hilariously similar to his time as a wrestler in the 90s, working for the WWF until 1996, then leaving them to work for WCW until 1997, when he then returned to the WWF until 1999, when he then left them again to work for WCW until it closed down in 2001. No reason has been given yet as to why Jared is out of the company, as reports suggest he was on good terms with them, even thanking WWE for letting him be a part of Ric Flair's final match, where he teamed with AEW's Jay Lethal to take on Flair and his son-in-law Andrade El Idolo. He was also the special guest referee at SummerSlam in the tag match between the Usos and Street Profits. But at least now Effie has a chance to get his win back, and that's the most important thing. But Jaren isn't the only person done with their promotion. It was revealed over the weekend that Tennille Dashwood, the former Emma in WWE, has finished up her time in Impact Wrestling. Fans spotted that she'd been removed from Impact's roster page on their website, and Mike Johnson of PW Insider confirmed the news that Dashwood's contract had indeed expired and she was now leaving the promotion, putting over Masha Slamovich on the way out. Shortly after the news came out, Dashwood tweeted out a photo of the definition of free agent as a sports player who is not bound by contract and so is eligible to join any team. Daniel Dashwood to WWE return confirmed, etc. Though I am, of course, making the easy joke we always make on this show, Triple H has shown in his first few weeks in charge of creative that he's looking to bring back some of his NXT favorites for surprise appearances and returns on Raw and SmackDown. And Dashwood's IRL boyfriend friend Mad Cat Moss works for WWE, so, you know, Tennille Dashwood WWE return confirmed, etc. A couple of names Daddy Trips might not be able to get hold of, however, are the former No Way Jose and Wesley Blake, as they debuted for All Elite Wrestling at the AEW Dark Tapings in Orlando, Florida last night. Weston Blake was released from WWE last April, and since then has wrestled for Control Your Narrative and Pro Wrestling Revolver, and wrestled in a losing effort to Daniel Garcia in the AEW Dark Taping sessions. The former No Way Jose, now going by Leve Valenz, teamed with Barry Morales in a losing effort to Bear Country, who also been given the new name of the Iron Savages. He was released by WWE in May of 2020, and since then has wrestled a few times for Impact Wrestling and Defy, and once no-showed Quizzlemania. It should be noted that neither Blake or Valenz have been signed by AEW, as dark tapings have often seen names come in for one or two matches as triumphs. It has worked out well for a few names in the past, though, with Marina Shafir and Arya Davari making their debuts at AEW Dark before signing with the company to work Dynamite and Rampage shows. But it looks like Bear Country aren't the only team getting a new coat of paint, as former NXT UK stars Gallus made their NXT 2.0 debuts this past Wednesday by attacking Diamond Mine. And it looks like they're also getting a new name. A WWE.com preview of this week's episode of NXT 2.0 refers to the trio as the Gallus Boys instead of just Gallus. While this has been used in their catchphrases in the past, the wording of the article suggests that this is the new stable name. And speaking of NXT UK, it was announced last week that the brand would be going on hiatus until next year, where it'll be rebranded to NXT Europe. They've rebadged it, you fools. The writing has been on the wall for some time for NXT UK, as their next set of tapings at the BT Sports Studios were cancelled with no words on when they'd be rescheduled for. To that end, over 20 names were released from WWE last Thursday, including notable names like Trent Seven, Mark Andrews, Millie McKenzie, and Shah Samuels. While this may look like a bad first step for the NXT Europe brand that launches next year, PW Insider are reporting that the door is open for some of these names to return in the new year. Johnson adds that with the long hiatus ahead until the relaunch, it didn't make sense to keep everyone under contract. Perhaps one of the names to be brought back is Flash Morgan Webster, as Fightful Selector reporting that prior to him being released from WWE, he'd signed a new contract extension as the company wanted to retain him. While it was originally reported as just a short-term extension, SRS is now saying that it was more of a long-term basis before his release. On the August 12th SmackDown, Triple H brought back another crop of released stars with the return of Hit Row members Top Dollar, Ashante the Adonis, and B-Fab following the group's 
first release in November 2021. Now, rumors circulated that Top Dollar, aka AJ Francis, had backstage heat due to attitude problems. However, according to current AEW commentator Mark Henry on Busted Open Radio, those rumors were the results of talents who were worried about losing their spot. 